Alrighty, everyone. So welcome to our phylogenetics tree video. So really quickly, first thing we need to do is define phylogenetics. So phylogenetic, um, this is just a way, it's a method of classifying animals and plants by the characteristics that they have in common and showing evolutionary changes over time. So we have what's called a phylogenetic tree. And there are a couple ways that phylogenetic trees can be drawn. We're gonna start with this example but let's define what a phylogenetic tree is. So it's a diagram that shows evolutionary relationships. It is assumed, let me zoom in a little bit for you. It is assumed that the more characteristics the two organisms share, the more recently they diverged from a common ancestor. So what this looks like, if we take a peek at our phylogenetic tree over here, there's a couple of different parts to this. So the first part is what we call an outgroup. This little guy right here, number one, he represents an outgroup. So let me define what that means. An outgroup is the least closely related um, on our phylogenetic tree. It also separate off the tree first. So essentially, when we're looking at phylogenetic trees, each of these numbers up here, they represent a species. Each of these represent a different species. Down here, this part represents the common ancestor. So when we're looking at this, this common ancestor, these species derived from this common ancestor. So I kind of think of it like a highway. If you were driving, this guy was the first one and then they started kind of taking their exits. And these little marks right here, they represent derived characteristics. Oops, I'm not gonna fit it. Derived characteristics. Okay, so what that means is that something happened right here evolutionarily. That was a weird way to say that, but some trait happened, maybe it was hair. So if hair formed right here in time, then this organism has hair, this organism has hair, this organism has hair, and this organism has hair. Let's say the next one maybe was, I don't know, um, the ability to walk on two legs. So Group number one can't walk on two legs, right? It, it doesn't have that exit. But everything else has hair and is able to walk on two legs. If this next characteristic, let's say, was um, a bigger brain, I don't know. So number one, our outgroup, still just only has hair. Number two has hair and the ability to stand up on two feet. Number three has hair, the ability to stand up on two feet, 
and a bigger brain, number four also has all of those things since there's no new um, trait right here. But these are all separate species. When a phylogenetic tree branches like this, we call that speciation. That means that a new species was created. And when we read phylogenetic trees, it goes from past, which would be the common ancestor, to present or more recent. Maybe we should say recent instead. Recent. So that's kind of how we look at them. It's a little bit confusing when you first start, but as we go, you'll get more comfortable. Let's define this. I just want to make sure we all understand what a derived characteristic is. This is a characteristic. I'm not going to fit it again. Characteristic or trait that separates different species. I'll write it up here just so you remember. Derived characteristic. So that's like what we talked about. We had the um, the hair, the ability to walk on two feet, and the bigger brain. Okay, that's just an example. So let's go ahead and move on. We we've, we've already kind of talked about how we read these, but a phylogenetic tree shows, in this example, the relationship between four relatives. So these four species are related because they share a common ancestor. These relatives share a common ancestor, like I just said. Common ancestor at the root of the tree. Okay. A common ancestor is, I'm going to write it kind of down here, the ancient organism that more recent organisms share. So that's kind of our definition of a common ancestor. Note that this diagram is also a timeline. So like I showed you up here, we go from past at the bottom of the tree to more recent at the top as we get further um, kind of to the right in this example. So species number four is the most recent species. And species number one is our outgroup it's the least closely related to species four. So moving back down here, the older organism is at the bottom of the tree, as we've already said. Branches on the tree represent divergence of a species. So divergence kind of means separating and like I mentioned up here, speciation is the formation of a new species. So the four descendants at the top of the tree are different species. That's important. These are not the same. These are all different species that have different derived characteristics, but they shared a common ancestor. Okay, so species, let's go ahead and change this to one, two, and three. Each have characteristics that are unique to only them. So species number one, for our example that I said, has only hair. Species number two then has hair and it has the ability to walk on two feet which species one doesn't have. Species three has hair, the ability to walk on two feet, and a larger brain. So that's 
something that species two and one don't have. Species four has all of those things, but maybe changed a little bit in some other way. So let me try to move my paper down a little bit. There we go. So they sh also share some part of their histories with species one. So all of these species up here, species two, three, and four, they share some part of history with species one, right? They all have hair. So they all share that kind of same trait. And they all come from the same common ancestor. So this shared history is the common ancestor. That R is really ugly. It's okay, though. So there are also two other ways that we can draw trees. So the one that's up above and then these two. In these two examples, I'll just go ahead and kind of label where um, the important parts are going to be. So this part up here, that is our outgroup for this type of tree. This part over here shows the most, oops, most closely related, most closely related species. And then down here would be our common ancestor. I'll shade that in. Common ancestor. So it's just you read it a little bit differently, but it has all of the same components, right? It has our three different derived characteristics. For this tree up here is our outgroup. That is the thing that is the most different from all these other guys, right? It has the least amount of um, derived characters. It comes most directly from the common ancestor, which is right here. I'm going to go ahead and just boop. It's also a common ancestor. And then the most closely related species on this tree are those guys. Sorry, the arrows are a little bit confusing, but hopefully you can kind of follow. So there's just different ways that we can draw phylogenic trees and different ways that we can represent the same information. All right, the final part of this is what is called phyletic groups. So a phyletic group is a group that includes a common ancestor and all of the descendants living and extinct of that common ancestor. So in these two examples, these are considered phyletic groups. These two over here are not phyletic. So think about what the common ancestor is, right? That would be this down here. And they should be a phyletic group should be things that are directly related. So these two have a lot in common, right? They have any traits that derived here, and there's a direct line to the common ancestor. Same thing over here. A direct line to the common ancestor, and also they have the same kind of groups. They, they have the same, um, I don't want to say speciation, but they kind of have the same... I can't think of the right word right now. It's so early in the morning. But you kind of can understand, right? So this part, they have maybe the same um, characteristics, but just different species here. Again, same common ancestor. Different species, but share very similar common um, characteristics. Over here, they are not on the same side of the tree. So that's our first um, red flag. Even though these come from the same ancestor, they have different characteristics coming if they go on both sides like this. This one also, right? It goes on both sides. There's definitely different characteristics happening on both sides of these trees. So this is not a phyletic group. Um, that concludes, let me go ahead and, um, let me see if I want to include 
this. Ooh, okay, let me really quickly, I'm just going to kind of add if there were traits that were derived at these points, this would help us determine um, the phyletic group also. Like these two have the same traits, these two have the same traits. In this case, if it's on this side, this guy does not have the same traits. In this case, since it's separating so crazy like this, they're not going to have the same traits all the way up.